Section 5 of Southern Horrors, Lynch Law in All Its Phases. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by James K. White. Southern Horrors, Lynch Law in All Its Phases by Ida B. Wells. The South's Position. Henry W. Grady, in his well-remembered speeches in New England and New York, pictured the Afro-American as incapable of self-government. Through him and other leading men, the cry of the South to the country has been, Hands off! Leave us to solve our problem. To the Afro-American, the South says, The white man must and will rule. There is little difference between the antebellum South and the New South. Her white citizens are wedded to any method however revolting, any measure however extreme, for the subjugation of the young manhood of the race. They have cheated him out of his ballot, deprived him of civil rights or redress, therefore, in the civil courts, robbed him of the fruits of his labor, and are still murdering, burning, and lynching him. The result is a growing disregard of human life. Lynch law has spread its insidious influence till men in New York State, Pennsylvania, and on the free western plains feel they can take the law in their own hands with impunity, especially where an Afro-American is concerned. The South is brutalized to a degree not realized by its own inhabitants, and the very foundation of government, law, and order are imperiled. Public sentiment has had a slight reaction, though not sufficient to stop the crusade of lawlessness and lynching. The spirit of Christianity of the great M.E. Church was aroused to the frequent and revolting crimes against a weak people, enough to pass strong condemnatory resolutions at its general conference in Omaha last May. The spirit of justice of the grand old party asserted itself sufficiently to secure a denunciation of the wrongs and a feeble declaration of the belief in human rights in the Republican platform at Minneapolis, June 7. Some of the great dailies and weeklies have swung into line, declaring that lynch law must go. The President of the United States issued a proclamation that it be not tolerated in the territories over which he has jurisdiction. Governor Northern and Chief Justice Bleckley of Georgia have proclaimed against it. The citizens of Chattanooga, Tennessee, have set a worthy example in that they not only condemn lynch law, but her public men demanded a trial for Weems, the accused rapist, and guarded him while the trial was in progress. The trial only lasted ten minutes, and Weems chose to plead guilty and accept twenty-one years' sentence than invite the certain death which awaited him outside that cordon of police if he had told the truth and shown the letters he had from the white woman in the case. Colonel A. S. Collier of Nashville, Tennessee, is so overcome with the horrible state of affairs that he addressed the following earnest letter to the Nashville American. Nothing since I've been a reading man has so impressed me with the decay of manhood among the people of Tennessee as the dastardly submission to the mob reign. We have reached the unprecedented low level, the awful criminal depravity of substituting the mob for the court and jury, of giving up the jail keys to the mob whenever they are demanded. We do it in the largest cities and in the country towns. We do it in midday. We do it after full, not to say formal, notice. And so thoroughly and generally is it acquiesced in that the murderers have discarded the formula of masks. They go into the town where everybody knows them, sometimes under the gaze of the governor, in the presence of the courts, in the presence of the sheriff and his deputies, in the presence of the entire police force, take out the prisoner, take his life, often with fiendish glee, and often with acts of cruelty and barbarism which impress the reader with a degeneracy rapidly approaching savage life. 
that the state is disgraced but faintly expresses the humiliation which has settled upon the once proud people of tennessee the state in its majesty through its organized life for which the people pay liberally makes but one record but one note and that a criminal falsehood was hung by persons to the jury unknown the murder at shelbyville is only a verification of whatever intelligent man knew would come because with a mob a rumor is as good as a proof these efforts brought forth apologies and a short halt but the lynching mania was raged again through the past three months with unabated fury the strong arm of the law must be brought to bear upon lynchers in severe punishment but this cannot and will not be done unless a healthy public sentiment demands and sustains such action the men and women in the south who disapprove of lynching and remain silent on the perpetration of such outrages are particeps criminis accomplices accessories before and after the fact equally guilty with the actual lawbreakers who would not persist if they did not know that neither the law nor militia would be employed against them end of section 5 recording by james k white chula vista